guys welcome back to my channel today it is super rainy and gross outside and Ian's in the sunroom watching TV and I just thought like let me sit down and chat with you guys I've been thinking about this video for a while and thought about what items do I invest in and what items do I skimp on? Like where is it important to invest and where is it that I can like save some moolah? Because let's be honest, trends change, you get tired of something, you wanna change it up a little bit. So you kinda wanna go through your space and like do a refresh, but you don't wanna spend gobs and gobs and gobs of money to do it, right? Like everybody, no matter who it is, even millionaires, are on a budget. Their budget may be very different, but they are on a budget. So I thought today we would sit down and talk about 10 places to spend your money and 10 places to save some money when it comes to home decor. Let's talk about where to invest your money. Some of these are gonna be very like, duh, Kate, of course you spend your money there, but some of them you would be surprised to hear me say. So first off, we're talking about your mattress and your bed. Now, I do work for a mattress company, so I might be a little biased, but there's a statistic going around that says you spend one third of your life in bed. Think about that. When you wake up in the morning and scroll it on your Instagram, when you take a nap, Saturday mornings watching cartoons or YouTube, um, People spend a lot of time in bed. It's important to invest in not only your bed frame, but also your mattress itself. Um, this is not sponsored by my company or anything. It's really important to everyone's well-being and health to get a good night's sleep. And part of that is having the right kind of mattress, the right kind of box spring or foundation for your bed. I think the frame, you could easily find a second hand, but you do want it to be sturdy and solid. You know, Ikea's beds, they're fine, but would I suggest you, if you're trying to look for something that's on the more affordable side, like definitely go ahead and like check out your second hand stores, estate sales, Facebook Marketplace is a great spot to look for potential options. Those are all great places. We bought a bed when we first got married. It was in perfect condition. I wanted something new, so I actually opted to buy one from West Elm that was a little bit more streamlined and, and met my aesthetic better. But you know, you can find great options, but I would say invest within your budget as far as your whole bed component goes, but if you're gonna put more money towards something, I would put it towards your mattress over the bed frame. The second thing that you should invest your money in is your couch. Now hear me out. If you're on a really tight budget, you can still find great pieces on Facebook Marketplace. That goes without saying for this whole video. Like you can find great secondhand options. And I would encourage everyone to look for secondhand options if they can and they're on a tight budget. It makes more sense to buy a better quality secondhand piece than it does to go buy something from like Rooms to Go or big lots or Ikea that is just not well made. You know, we had bought a cheaper sofa when we first got married and it, it did the job. We had it for almost 10 years, but we recently in the last five years invested in a really nice leather sofa. We personally have the Love Sack couch. Um, we invested in it. I, I think it's key to say if you're gonna invest in something like that, like a big ticket item, do your research. I stocked Love Sack for over a year. I watched their promotions for an entire year to see when the best, when they gave the highest percentage off and it was Black Friday and I was able to get 35% off of our couch or 30% off, which was the biggest sale that they had. So you can, you can definitely like track good things, but you wanna read the reviews. You wanna sit on it. You need to consider how you use your sofa. Um, for instance, like we are TV loungers. So we wanted a couch that was deep seats and was made for lounging. Um, there are some beautiful sofas out in the world. I recently watched a video and was like, that looks like the most uncomfortable couch I've ever seen in my life. 
Um, so if it's for a sitting room, um, or maybe you sit and read more and you're not really like a lay on the couch, take a nap kind of family, like that's totally okay. But just consider like how it's made and how you're gonna use it. One thing my dad has recently been looking for a new couch for his house and our family is tall. I am almost six foot tall. My dad's six seven. My youngest sister is six nine. And so my dad loves mid-century modern clean lines, but the reality of it is it's like it's all low backed, right? And so a lot of the couches he sat on, the back of the couch hit like below his shoulder blades. Well, that's not comfortable to sit on to watch TV and lounge. So they, it took them a really long time. I think it took them almost two or three years to find a couch that they liked that was comfortable and matched their aesthetic. So don't be afraid to take your time. You know, I personally think it's better to live with something you don't love um, than invest in something that you're gonna hate in two years and wanna replace it anyway. Because even a cheap sofa is around $1,000 um, I mean, they could get expensive depending on where you buy them from. Next thing up, sheets and towels. It's really important. I went to school for textiles and the quality of sheets and towels you use is important. I personally hate synthetic fibers for sheets and towels. Um, I don't like microfiber sheets. I don't like microfiber towels. They don't absorb water. Like synthetic fibers, this is a little sidebar, so if you don't wanna hear about it, like fast forward, but synthetic fibers are hydrophobic, which means that they repel water. They do not like water. The whole point of a towel is to absorb water. So when you're using a microfiber towel, which is synthetic, it is not gonna absorb anything. Um, same thing with sheets like cotton and, um, and linen, they are a natural fiber. So they actually absorb some of your body moisture to wick it away from you, which causes you to have a cooler sleeping experience and tend to be softer. The longer you wash them, the softer they become. Whereas like polyester and, and other synthetic fibers, I mean, bamboo is technically a natural fiber, but like it's not great for the environment, so I don't advise it. But like synthetic fibers, again, they're hydrophobic. So they're not gonna absorb any of the moisture you have when you sleep. And so you tend to get hot because that hot air gets trapped within the sheets. So just keep that in mind. Like I'm not saying you have to go out and buy you know, $200 sets of sheets and towels. You can find some really great options. I personally love the um, thread, or excuse me, what is the brand at Target? Threshold and the Opal House and their Casa Luna, Casa Luna brand. I think Target has the best quality sheets for your buck. Now you're still gonna, depending on what size bed you have, you're still gonna spend some money on it. Um, Brook Linen has really great options as well. They're a little bit more expensive, so if you wanna invest, like that's where I would say invest. You know, if you think about their functionality, you want them to keep you cool and keep you dry, and so natural fibers are definitely the way to go. Okay, next up, statement art. So, art can get super pricey, especially if you're buying originals. Um, depending on what type of art you like too. But I do think it's important to invest in art, be it a local artist or even a reproduction of a piece that you love. And I'm not talking about like little art that you put on your bookshelf. I'm talking like big statement pieces, like statement pieces that you you have over your dining table, over your mantle, that kind of stuff. I think it's important to invest in those. Um, because the art you have in your house says a lot about you. And I say that not in a judgmental way, but it shines your personality and what you tend to gravitate towards. It, it can really make or break a space. One other thing I think you should invest in is large area rugs. So rugs can get hella expensive. I'm talking, especially if you buy vintage Turkish or Persian rugs, oh my God, thousands and thousands of dollars. like. I've never invested in one of those, but I do think it's important to invest in good quality rugs. Um, you walk on them, so they need to be comfortable. 
they see a lot of wear and tear. Uh, they can look really ratty really fast if you don't have them have good quality. And I think it's important to invest in the size of rug that you need for the space. So what do I mean by that? I mean, if you have too small of a rug in your space, it looks inexpensive. It looks like the room is not well put together. Um, rugs are expensive. I, that was one of the most, I think there's a meme on the internet that talks about like, name one thing you didn't realize was so expensive until you became an adult and they're like rugs. Like you can easily pay four or five, six hundred dollars for an eight by 10 rug. And that's on the cheap end, you know? Um, again, to tie back to the textiles industry, you know, your wool rugs and nylon rugs are gonna be your best quality. Um, they stand, those fibers stand up to uh, wear and tear a lot better than anything else. Whereas like polyester and cotton rugs are going to be a little bit easier to peel and, um, and like have those little nubbies and kind of like unravel a bit more. So I would say like large area rugs is a place to invest, especially if you're looking for something with color, um, now that's not to say, you know, you can't find great deals. Like one of my favorite places to find unique rugs is on Etsy. Um, I also really like one or uh, rugs direct has some really great options and they have good sales. People can get kind of funny about buying rugs secondhand because they do kind of absorb the smells of the spaces they're in. So be mindful of that. Next up statement lighting. Now I'm not saying you need to invest in all lighting in your house because I think there are some really great options on Amazon and Etsy that are affordable. Um, and I'm not saying like every light fixture in your house has to be this beautiful artisan piece, but consider the rooms that make the biggest statement. So think about your dining room. That lighting fixture over your dining room, that can be like the focal point of the entire room. So consider investing in that or even your living room lighting, lighting in a bathroom. You know, like I said, you can find affordable options. I mean, lighting can get super expensive. I mean, Ian will tell you, I have a, an affinity to uh, picking out the most expensive piece of lighting or furniture or really anything. And then I'm gobsmacked by the prices. Obviously like adjust it for what's in your budget, right? Like buy what you can afford and you know, save up for that piece. That's why I said like invest in the pieces of lighting that make the biggest impact. So the places that you're gonna see it the most is over the dining room table in an entryway. Those are the type of places that I would invest in. Um, the guest room, you probably don't need a thousand dollar light for your guest room. Like a normal light fixture off of Etsy is probably fine. You know, your hallway, not really important to put a sparkling bedazzled chandelier there. Now, if you want to do that, by all means, be my guest, do it. You don't need to put it there if you don't want to. So invest it where it makes sense and then kind of skimp in other areas. Next up, dining chairs. Now hear me out. Most people would tell you that you need to invest in the whole dining set. And I don't disagree with that, but I do think you can get away with buying a secondhand table because think about it, like a secondhand table, you can refinish it, you can paint it. Um, it doesn't really absorb smells. Like a lot of older furniture tends to be more sturdy. But dining room chairs, have you ever gone to somebody's house for a dinner and they had the most uncomfortable dining room chair you've ever sat in in your entire life? And they sit there for two hours talking and your butt is gone numb? Cause I have, and it's uncomfortable. So I would say invest in your dining room chairs. They get slid in and out constantly. You want them to be comfortable. You want them to look stylish. Cause again, in a dining room, there's not that much there, right? Like. You got your chandelier, you got your table, you got your chairs. Realistically, that's about all that you can fit in and maybe some artwork, right? So think about it. If you're gonna invest, you want to invest in really comfortable dining room chairs so that you can sit there and have a dinner table and make people feel like they're comfortable enough to linger and keep the conversation going. Or if you're playing a board game like Monopoly, you're not like antsy in your chair because your bottom's gone, gone numb, you know what I mean? So. To me, I would say invest in the dining chairs over the dining table. Okay, next up, your dresser. Now this is something that I wouldn't have normally said, 
but I am saying it now. And the reason I'm saying that is because I have too many clothes. And I know that I have too many clothes. And when you buy a cheap dresser, the bottoms bow out. And they, the drawers get sticky. And you know, there's just a lot of things that can go wrong. I do think it's important to invest in a nice dresser. And, and a good, not even nice, in a quality made dresser. Like a solid wood dresser. They are a pain to move. They are heavy. They are awkward. They are a lot. We recently redid my um, Ikea at the beginning of the year, my Ikea dresser, and I loved how that hack turned out. But the more that, I mean, we had that for 10 years. So for an Ikea piece, that's a pretty solid dresser and it got a second home. I sold it on Facebook Marketplace and somebody came and got it. But the bottoms of the drawers were bowing because we had too much stuff in it. And I just realized that like, I want quality made pieces in my home where I can afford them. I did buy a secondhand dresser. It's a Thomasville furniture piece, solid wood. Um, it, it's it's quite nice, you know? It's got some dings and scratches, but all in all, it's a good piece. So I would say invest in your dresser, especially if you have a lot of clothes, like myself. All right, next up, and this is kind of vague, and I'm leaving it vague for a reason. And I'm gonna say, pieces with meaning. What do I mean by that? I mean, pieces that will make a statement in your home that you love that express your personality for instance this piece right here behind me so we were gifted this furniture set of the couch and love seat from ian's mom and it's a very nice leather couch is it really my style not particularly but you know it's good quality um, so we received this and I wanted something that was a little less traditional to play off of these because these are very traditional transitional pieces. So I found this piece off of article, this one right behind me, the sideboard for our entryway and I fell in love with it. I mean, I fell in love with it to the point that I scoured the internet. I'll link this piece below, they still sell it. But they sc I scoured the internet to find a dupe that was more affordable. Y'all, I could not find anything I liked as much as I liked that piece. And I was like, I will love that piece forever. I don't think I will ever get tired of it. I love that it's two-tone wood, so it'll blend with whatever I choose to put it with. I love that it has texture, but it's still natural. Like, I loved everything about it. I am gonna blow out this candle behind me. Okay, I put it out. Uh, the heat mint's right there, and I'm like, eek! Um, that's, that's blowing a little too much for my liking. I don't wanna catch my house on fire, or the piece of furniture that I love on fire. So I fell in love with this. And I was like, you know what? I, I love it. Another thing that I've been eyeing, I have not pulled the trigger on, spider leg coffee table that has the like brass tray on it. I love the look of it. Um, we're not a coffee table family, so I have not bought one because <laughs> um, they are kind of pricey, but I love the aesthetic of it so much. And if I ever find a good deal on one, I might buy it just to have and, and like maybe change out one of our ottomans. But the reality of it is it's like a piece that I find really impactful and intriguing. This could be anything. It could be a sideboard. I mean, there is a, a furniture wardrobe that I have seen at one of the local antique stores and I'm in love with it. I mean, it is like 12 feet tall. It's huge. I have no room for it. I have nowhere to be. But if I had the right house, then I would buy it. I don't need a wardrobe. I don't have anywhere to put a wardrobe, so I did not buy it. It's also huge, and we moved too much for me to invest in a piece like that. But if I had my forever home and, and it had 12 foot ceilings, I would, I would buy that piece of furniture today. So it's those things that evoke emotion out of you that you fall madly deeply in love and you cannot get out of your head. Those are the things that I'm talking about. And it could be anything. It could be a sideboard, it could be a mantle, it could be a piece of art. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the pieces where you can save a little bit of money if you want to, right? Like it's all a balance. You you buy these things expensive and then you skip somewhere else. Like that's just that's just good good habits. So the number one thing that I would say scrimp on is your throw pillows. And I'm not saying that you can't buy nice pillows. Like look y'all, I have this one. I fell in love with this one at Anthropology. Um, it is faux fur, like my guest room blanket. It's got kind of like a citron green undertone. It's coming off orange on this camera but it is green with a brown overlay and I love this pillow and y'all this pillow had been $100 and I got it for $39 so it was the pillow insert and the pillow 
cover. I would suggest investing in some nice pillow inserts and then buying more affordable covers because the reality of it is, is you can change the feeling of your space very quickly by changing out your pillow covers and you can get those off of Etsy, Amazon, H&M has great options. Heck, even Pottery Barn has options. They're a little bit more expensive. West Elm has some really great ones and they go on sale a lot. So I'm, I'm just saying like maybe invest in the pillow inserts um, and get really nice down ones that don't go too flat and then save on the covers because you're gonna change those out more commonly than you would other things. Second thing that I think you can scrimp on is window treatments. So I'm talking curtains. Now I do think that you should buy longer curtains and you know I've talked about mounting them higher so that the ceiling feels elongated but there are some really great affordable options at Ikea, Amazon, again H&M Home has some really great options, TJ Maxx and HomeGoods. I don't think you have to spend a lot of money to get good quality curtains. Because the reality of it is, is your curtains are just fabric hanging on a rod. You can make your own for heaven's sakes. You do not need to spend a lot of money on curtains. You can. Curtains can get super expensive, but the reality of it is, is like you can find really nice affordable options at those places I mentioned and save yourself some money. Curtain rods is where you spend a lot of money because especially if you have big windows and span a long space, right? But like Ikea has some really good options there too. All right, next up is side tables, like accent tables or nightstands. So again, I think, you know, investing in your dining table or your dresser is important because you use that all the time. But the reality of it is like side tables and nightstands, like I might invest more in nightstands than I would side tables because the reality of it is, is like those are more affordable to change if your style changes and they get less use. Think about how many times you open your dresser drawer a day. You open it at least, open and close it at least three or four times a day, right? Like you're getting dressed in the morning, you're opening multiple drawers, you're, you know, getting in your jammies at night, you're opening drawers, whereas your nightstands, you're putting a glass of water on it and you don't really use it. I mean, you do for like that 10 minutes before, before you go to bed and when you wake up, but the reality of it is it just holds the lamp most days. So you can definitely find options that are affordable. Next up is accent art. So, what am I talking about? You know, I know I talked about like statement art before. So I do think it's important to have a variety of art in your house, but I'm not saying you have to go spend thousands of dollars on every piece of art you have in your house. That's just not realistic. So I think like pieces that go on your bookshelves or if you're doing a gallery wall, like you can find some really great art, like digital downloads on Etsy. You can find some nice pieces at Home Goods. You can find some things at Target. Um, you can find some good pieces here and there to make a collection. I think it's important to buy a couple of really unique pieces that you love that show off your personality, but you're not gonna, you're not gonna invest in every single piece of art that's in your house. Like that's just not realistic guys. Scrimp on some, splurge on some others and have a nice variety. All right, next thing is like tabletop and bookshelf accessories. Um, I personally think you shouldn't spend a lot of money in this. I thrift or find at estate sales the majority of the stuff that I use to style things. You know, if there's something that's cute on clearance or something, then I might buy that a couple of pieces here and there, but I would not invest in a lot. You can do, there are so many DIY dupes for high-end places like West Elm, Pottery Barn, Our House, um restoration hardware like people are duping stuff left and right i think you can come up with some things that are really really nice i recently watching was, was watching diy danny and there was a lulu and georgia candle that was like four hundred dollars and y'all i was like who in their right mind would pay four hundred dollars for a candle like that is bananas to me so like i would say thrift something similar diy something similar like skimp on those things again those are the things that are going to be a little bit more trendy and come and go so i would say like save on those and invest in other things next thing up is blankets um you don't have to pay a lot of money for a nice blanket like throw blankets at the foot of your bed or 
you know lounge on the couch these can kind of be seasonal so and again like changing those out can make a can really change the vibe of your space so there are great options again on amazon tj maxx home goods you know even target they have really great ones all right small mats like doormats or small runners uh for rugs these are the ones that you put by the front door that get muddy when it's on a rainy day like today these are the ones that you know like see high traffic i would not invest a lot of money in these because the reality of it is, is they might get ruined potentially you know if you're gonna invest in something like a runner or a doormat consider getting a ruggable that you can throw in the wash or rugs direct has some washable options as well so next up is books now it's really trendy right now to have coffee table books out on your coffee table thus the name um and they can get expensive and especially if you if you have bookshelves and stuff and you're not really a reader uh, books can get super expensive very quickly y'all know i'm a sucker for hitting up estate sales and yard sales and thrift stores for books um you can get really good deals jenny and i my sister we scored so many books at the the mega yard sale that we did um back last summer i mean i think we got something close to like 40 books each for like 20 bucks and last but not least what i think you should scrimp on is house plants and pots now <laughs> if you're a house plant person you know that plants can be quite the pricey investment um they're not too long ago the hot trendy plant and just like everything else plants do trend up and down there was the variegated monstera that when i found one i was like oh i like this y'all it was a hundred dollars for a teeny tiny six inch pot i was like absolutely not <laughs> so expensive and plants can get expensive so i would say shop your big box stores if you're looking for something very specific that and you love the plant like go for it i will say i've killed a lot of plants so like i don't really want to invest in a lot of plants because i'm i know that they you know the shot of the the likelihood of them thriving and surviving is a 50 50 shot <laughs> like honestly you know i have a lot of friends that are great plant parents but i i'm not like i'm not at all i'm better with outdoor plants than i am indoor plants um another place that you wouldn't think to buy them but is actually a really good place to buy them is estate sales um the estate sale that i went to looking for that ceramic elephant for my sister had this gorgeous rubber plant i mean it was huge they wanted forty dollars for it and honestly it was ginormous and had i not had to take it down one of the most treacherous hills i've ever walked down that i wasn't hiking down um i probably would have bought it because it was also 25 percent off so it would have been 30 bucks for this massive along with that also it's plant pots so like the vessels you put them in i don't know about y'all but have you looked at some of those planters like the pots they can get so expensive so expensive i mean easily break the bank even at like home depot especially if you're looking for ceramic ones my number one place to find pots surprisingly is walmart y'all i'm not a fan of walmart whoever the buyer is the seasonal buyer is for their potted plants and outdoor decor is on point. Like there are some amazing options. I think that might be the only thing I ever advise y'all to seek out at Walmart. <laughs> but that buyer, if, if you hear this and you're that buyer, kudos to you because you're doing great things. There are some really high end things that look like they came from West Elm and you know, uh, Crate and Barrel. Like there are some really, really nice ones. Now again, if you love it, go ahead and invest in it. But I, I personally think that that's an area you can scrimp on. That's my list for today. I hope this helps. Um, helps you kind of navigate where to invest and where to kind of, you know, scale back and save some money. Um, again, these are just my personal opinions. So, you know, if, if you want to invest in something, go for it i'm not telling you not to spend your money it's your money but i'm just saying if you're looking to save some of that to i don't know go travel or invest or you know just 
just to have like these are some areas that I think you should save on um, I do think it's important to invest in some things like we mentioned a mattress your couch those are my top two things that I would say if you're gonna invest in something your mattress and your couch are the two things that you should spend the most money on um, if you think about it there are things you use every day like you sleep every night and you typically sit on your couch every day like at some point you know um, so anyway, those are just my opinions. Uh, I hope you liked today's video. Let me know in the comments below. What do you, what do you typically splurge on and what do you save? Thanks guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and come back next week for a brand new one. Until then, I'll see you guys later. Bye.